Hello my friends. Here is a hammock swing stand that you can build in an afternoon. It's inexpensive and easy to build. Let me show you the process. Landscape timber from Lowe's, four dollars and thirty-eight cents. You need four of them. After taking one of the eight foot pieces of lumber, locate dead center and we're going to cut this at 30 degrees. This will give us two identical pieces. These are the uprights. Locate the center of a second timber and we're going to cut this in half and this will make the base uh, support legs. What I did here is I took the two uprights, these were cut at 30 degrees, and what I'm going to do then is uh, use those as a guide, and I'm going to cut these supports. These are going to be three foot long, and this is going to give me a 30 degree angle. Here's the hardware that I purchased. Okay, these uh, spring clips. These I did not use. I purchased S-hooks because they fit the hammock. These aren't needed. The S-hooks clip onto the eyelets. Onto these eyelets. These eyelets will go on the end of the vertical uprights. There's four. Uh, these are 5 sixteenths inch, uh, 6 inch long carriage bolts and these are for bolting the feet onto the base and then these are 516 uh, lag screws six inches long these are to hold the uh, supports on and then I have a package of 516-18 nuts and a package of 516 washers here I have the supports laid out, dry fit, and what you need is nine feet between the two uprights. And this is measuring nine feet. And then the horizontal support, this one, that measures seven feet. I took one foot off the end. Then the feet for this are going to be bolted right on this end right here. Okay, we're going to assemble this part first, and then the last thing we'll be putting the uh, cross members for the feet. When I'm laying this out, I'm going to set this inside corner at 8 inches, and then this is for the upright, and then I'm going to run two screws and this will be the placement I want to enter near here and the reason I'm using two in this is to keep this vertical from having a tendency to do any twisting this lower piece will be piloted so that the screw can slide through the pilot hole and then anchored into this one The pilot for this lower one will be large enough that the uh, threads will slide through the hole and not bite into it.
This is the pilot with the lag screw. Using a washer for the underside. Half inch drive. Snug it up, don't over tighten it. Make sure it's squared. I had to loosen this up so I could pivot. This one I was not able to pilot. Both are snug. When you're going to put these supports on, you want to make sure that both the top and bottom are flush. If you have it cocked, you're going to have a gap on both ends. So you've got to fit them to where they're perfect. And then you want to run this lag screw since this is a six inch screw. We don't want to come out the other side. We're going to run it right in through here. So we'll drill our pilot right parallel with this. And we can take it part way into there. Snug it up. Using a washer with the lag screw. Five sixteenths inch makes a snug fit. You can see here what I did is I turned the whole frame upside down and supported it just so that I can work on attaching the feet. And the reason I'm doing that is this area here. I can't run my drill through in this direction. So I'm going to do it from the bottom. And what you want to do here is measure in two inches, measure in two inches, and then I'm going to drill through the bottom and I'm staggering the holes rather than in line just in case the bolt might cause the wood to check. And it won't, this way, if it's staggered, it won't follow the grain in either of the timbers. So, if you have a drill bit that's long enough, that'll go through all of these, uh, that's what you should use. If not, I'm going to drill the first hole. Now this one... I can come all the way through that way. The second hole we can't do it quite the same, but we can set this in to register it. And I drilled one bit size 
over the 5 sixteenths at this point you want to square it up drill your second hole before it punches through check it for squareness again since I did move it now we can finish the second hole This is a carriage bolt. Okay, you'll notice on the carriage bolt here, right at the head, there's a square shoulder. That square shoulder, I drive that into the uh, timber and that'll keep the uh, screw from turning when I'm tightening the nut. A nut with a washer. This is 51618 and the nut driver is a half inch. What I'm doing next is drilling a hole for the eyelet. What I want to do is come down two inches and center it. We want to use a washer with the eyelet. One on that side. And one to follow up on the nut. And we snug it up. All together. Ready to try or out. Here's a bill of materials for this project. What you're going to need, here's the hardware. You need two four inch eye bolts. You need eight six inch lag screws. These are five sixteenths inch diameter. You need four six inch carriage bolts, also five sixteenths diameter. And the timbers, you need four eight foot three by four inch landscape timbers. You can also use four by four uh, pressure treated posts. The landscape timber is uh, cheaper. These were just over four dollars a piece. The base, you need to take one of the landscape timbers, cut it to seven foot long, so take a foot off of the end of it. Then the uprights, you need two of these. Take one of your eight foot timbers, cut it in half, and this is at a 30 degree angle. Then you need to take the last or then another timber, cut two pieces three foot long, then cut the ends at 30 degrees. And this is the support when you 
place the hammock and sit on the hammock. Uh, the weight pulling down will have a tendency to pull these inward. So these supports resist that inward pull. And to hold it stable, to hold it on the ground, you need to take the last timber, cut it in half, so that will give you a four foot uh, base. And two lag screws hold this in at uh, both of those ends. At this point, I used also two lag screws holding these uh, uprights. And that will keep any twisting motion out of this. This is a easy, quick project, very inexpensive. The typical distance between the two is nine foot. Most hammocks will uh, clip on to this uh, base. Here's the finished hammock. And if you have intention on painting, you should let the pressure treated wood age up to three months before you put paint on and that way it dries out and the paint will stick. Thanks for watching my friends. Bye bye.